Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Jason Inman, and this is usually the podcast where we talk about one character, one book, one movie, one construct, and give you everything you need to know about it in a little bit less than an hour. But I'm going to tell you something. The holiday got away with us. We also are packing some Kickstarter rewards, and we didn't have time to record an episode this week. But do not despair, because there is an episode, as you can tell, that, you know, there's plenty of time left in this file. So don't go anywhere. There is an episode, and it's a lovely episode. It's a conversation that we had with actor Susan Eisenberg, who you will know as the voice of Wonder Woman from Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. And, you know, we recorded this during the Jawan Charity Drive for Service Members on 11-14-2020, and we thought it was such a great conversation that we want to make sure that all of our Geek History Lesson listeners get to listen to it as well. But before we get to that conversation, I want to talk about two things. Number one, our comic book, mine and Ashley Victoria Robinson's comic book, Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio, is now in comic book shops, and it's available for pre-order on Amazon. It's our second graphic novel in the Ringo-nominated series of Jupiter Jet, and if you don't know what it is, let me tell you a little bit about this graphic novel. The synopsis is this. When the mysterious Black Flyer arrives in orbit and threatens her world, Jupiter Jet finds out that her hero skills may not be up to the task. Being a hero requires more than just a jetpack. Does Jupiter Jet have the courage to save her entire planet? It's a fun sci-fi all-ages adventure book that we're very proud of, and it's available where all books are sold. Amazon, Walmart, Target, your local bookshop, your local comic book shop. If they don't have it, ask them to order it for you. And... If you've already read the book, well, thank you. Or if you've already ordered the book through our Kickstarter, well, thank you again. But do us a favor, if you've read it, go to goodreads.com or Amazon and leave us a review there. It doesn't matter how many stars it is, one to five. It all helps promote our book through that website. And we want to get at least 50 reviews each there on Goodreads and 50 on Amazon. And we need your help to do it. And I will say this, if every listener of this podcast goes and gives us a review on goodreads.com or Amazon for Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio, will easily cross that goal. Now, the second thing, before we get to the regular episode, is that we are doing a holiday special this year in 2020. We couldn't end 2020 without a holiday special, and we're definitely going to give you one. It's a very special one where Doctor Strange and Cleo will be answering your questions. There's a post on the GHL Twitter, at GHL Podcast on Twitter, and there's also a post on the Geek History Lesson Facebook over at facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson where you can leave your questions for Doctor Strange and Clea, and you'll hear that episode in a few weeks, and hopefully it gives you a bit of joy right before the holiday season. All right, enough of my jibba-jabba. Let's get to our conversation with Susan Eisenberg. Please enjoy. We are being joined by an actual Amazonian goddess, the voice of Wonder Woman, the voice of Mara. She's all over Mass Effect. If you are a nerd, she has been in your ear holes. We have the amazing Miss Susan Eisenberg joining us. <laughs> Thank so, you. So lovely to see you. So lovely to see anybody. <laughs> Truly. Um, I have a super important question that I want to start the stream with, and that is how are all and LG doing. <laughs> okay, first of all, I love that you called him LG because only <laughs> only the inner circle knows that that's what I refer to him as. Um, his, that's not the name he was given. Mm -hmm. um, we adopted him. He's a senior dude and we adopted him uh, three years ago and his original name was Bravo, but that never felt oh, a good like... Name. It's a great name, <laughs> except that it never felt like him. Mm -hmm. And so Ollie's a big guy yeah. And so we decided to go with LG and they are both doing great. Um, thank you for asking. They're, <laughs> they're, they're, they are, they just keep my spirits high. What can I tell you? If oh. anyone by the way, isn't following Susan on Instagram and be. Twitter, you should. Uh, her puppies bring me so much joy. I keep threatening to dog sit when we are allowed to leave our homes <laughs> again. <laughs> you know, and now my sister just adopted these two like I beautiful know. kitties. And, <laughs> and I realized, and I'm really slow to this, that the kitties, they are naturals with the Instagram thing because I post something with them and they're not even mine. They're my sister. <laughs> and it goes, like everyone's like, oh my God, kitties. So I think the kitties are more popular now than even Ollie and LG, but I can live with it. <laughs> I, I can live with it. 
I want to bring up this comment because I feel the same way. Super Sonic Hero 10 says, Super excited. I met Miss Susan Eisenberg, such an amazing woman and true superhero in her own right. And it's so funny because I, uh, I want to talk about that because we met you, I know, at a con mm -hmm. because of Mr. John Schnepp, who introduced us to you. And ever yeah. since then, we've been able to stay in touch. And yeah. um, I remember, it's so funny, um, I want to ask you, there, there is a question I, I'm getting to, but there's a long story to get there. Um, okay. So I remember when I first got my job at DC hosting for DC All Access, I, they, one of the first things they gave me was this amazing Wonder Woman statue. And it was in the style of Bruce Timm's artwork, and it was your Wonder Woman. And I remember I sent a picture of it to you and was like, hey, do you know this exists? This is awesome. And I remember you were like, can you get me one of those? And then for the next six months, I tried to get them to give me another one. And then I don't know why they just didn't have enough or they wouldn't do it or whatever. And I remember I was constantly like sending you messages being like, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I can't get it. And then you eventually, so kind of were like, oh, they sent one to me. Don't worry about it. And I was like, huh. So in the long story of that question, do you have a favorite action figure or or statue of any of the characters you voice? It doesn't even have to be Wonder Woman. Well, it would be Wonder Woman. Okay. Um, and you know, I do from the from the first couple of years, like with the first year we worked on the show, they gave like they 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 gave us. We bought them. Yes. Um, <laughs> and they were the uh, Warner Brothers, <laughs> you know, <laughs> who are wonderful uh, they, employers. <laughs> they, <laughs> they were, and we were like, you know, the beautiful, the beautiful statues that, you know, were like this, this long. And I, I wish I had it right here. I don't. It's in another room or else I'd run and get it. But it's near and dear to me. I mean, it really does the like, I, I just, that's my favorite thing that I have of her, except for the cells. I have cells. Oh, you um, do? I do. I have quite a few oh. um, with, with Bruce's signature and my signature. Bruce is being a little bit more valuable than mine. <laughs> but the fact that they're together is very awesome. Yeah. Did they yeah. give those but, to you or did you also have to purchase those? No. That we, we were we were doing we were at San Diego Comic Con and I think I just posted a picture with Kevin and George mm -hmm. from that time. And um yeah, we, so we signed a bunch of stuff and that we were given. But the statues we bought and I'm sure all the cast still has them. And that is, you know, I just look at her every day and I just, you know, that that's, it's beautiful. I mean, it's just so beautiful. So I've seen other like miniatures and people come up and they ask me to sign that at cons all the time, but I've never seen that identical one. So it's, it's really near to my heart. Nice. Well, we all know that we've been waiting forever. I mean, the, the movie that I've been, the most sad that's kept being delayed, of course, is Wonder Woman uh, 84. Um, yeah. And I want to ask you, and you may legally may not be able to answer this question, and that's totally fine. I mean, we um, actually, hopefully you won't be able to answer yes, this Yes, I'm question, hopefully but... you're saying that I cannot answer this question. I, I know um, where this is coming. I yeah. know where this is going. Yep. I know where it ca came from, and I know where it's going. And unfortunately, I think I'll be able to answer, but go ahead. Uh, it, would, if you got a cameo, if, if when, you got a, if, when, if, when you get a cameo in a live action Wonder yes. Woman movie, who would you want to play? Like, would you want to be a character in, like, Man's World, or would you want to be an Amazonian? Oh, Themyscira. Mm -hmm. Heck yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I love I love that whole world. I mean, I just love the um, the Greek mythology aspect of the character. I loved, I loved when we did Paradise Lost. I mean, I just, um, you know, a huge fan of that. So I would definitely want to be that. And um, as of now, I have not been asked to do a cameo, so I'll, I'll – and – and hopefully down the road there'll be something because it would it would just be the biggest kick in the world mm -hmm. to be even the, the tiniest part. And because I'm a voiceover actor, I don't need to be on camera. In fact, I don't want to be. <laughs> um, so it would just be so, you know, I, at this point I would take like, hold please. You know, like I would take that. I'd be thrilled. Thrilled and delighted. Um you know, I played an intercom voice once on Frasier. And let me just tell you, those residual checks are pretty good. I didn't so, know you were uh, on Frasier. That's like, for us personally, that's really cool. Yeah, we're, we're a big, we're a big uh, uh, toss salad and scrambled eggs house. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, this is the deal. So my a friend of mine, Rob Hanning, was a writer on the show. And he knew I was like doing voiceover. And he said, you want to do a, you know, he wrote one in for me into one of the scripts. It's like literally a line. And it was an intercom voice. And it was 
crazy because I had to go to the studio and sh- and record it live <laughs> on the stage as they were with recording. an audience. <laughs> Why would they do that live? <laughs> oh my God, you can't even imagine for somebody who's not on ca- not used to being on camera, like with a live audience. But the, the great thing is that I got to meet the cast. Mm-hmm. So I met Kelsey Grammer because you know I had to be in hair and makeup, and <laughs> it was so nerve wracking um, because literally you're at on the stage with a mic in front of you, and it's like okay, three. She, oh, Susan, go. And, like, <laughs> and one line, one line. I don't think I flubbed it, but it was so nerve wracking. So um, I would take an intercom voice. If, you know, I would be the intercom voice and, and happy and thrilled to do it in, in Wonder Woman movie. I just want to throw out there because I know WB is listening because we've dropped their names enough time in the stream so far. Uh, Susan Eisenberg for all the sirens every summer. <laughs> <laughs> Also, yeah. just to circle back to the dog question from the beginning, yeah. was one yeah. of the Eddies on set when you were there for oh, Frasier? Oh, one of the mooses. The moose. Yeah. No. Oh. I don't think so. No, Bomber. because I didn't have... No, because the shot that... We, I was in a doctor's office, mm-hmm. and so we weren't in the house set. So no, the dogs wouldn't have been... And I, you know, if the dogs had been there, I could have lost my mind, you know, because you put a dog in the space near me, and I'm just like, what? Nothing else exists to me. I, that's, so that's it's probably the better response. <laughs> we, we, we have a great question in the chat here, yeah. and it's from uh, um, actually a good friend of ours. Uh, uh, Mr. Jeremy Skinner says, yeah. Susan, has voice recording changed much during the pandemic? And do you see the industry moving towards self-recording at home? I, w- I would love to hear your opinion, of it because you are basically have been working completely from home, like most of us. Completely. How, completely. What's that been for you? What's that been like? Um. Well, a part of me loves it because not only am I working from home, but I'm auditioning from home Mm -hmm. and I like it. You know, I like I'm a homebody. So it really is nice to be able to do everything, you know, just in my cozy little space. The downside is you don't get directed. So you're self-directing and you can spend way too much time, especially if you're self-critical, way too much time on lines and thinking, okay, well, let me try it this way. Let me try that. At a certain point, I just have to cut myself off and just say, enough, you got it. Let let it go. <laughs> um, but um, the doing the work at home, doing the jobs, and I've 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 done a few now. It's I like it, but you become the engineer, and that's weird, you know. So if 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 you're recording from home, you're usually responsible for doing the backup, mm. um, and the backup record. So there's some extra pressure about that. Like, Oh, please <laughs> God, let me have press yeah. record. Um, and you want, you know, there's just pressure on the sound. There's pressure on, um, the quality of the sound that you're not usually responsible for. That's an engineer who does all that. Yeah. So you take that engineer out of the equation, you become your own engineer. Um, it adds a different level of, of responsibility. Um, now that I've got it kind of figured out, it, it's like, but it's it was very very nerve wracking in the beginning. Um, but unfortunately, this has been going on for so long that I'm a- I've able to figure it out. In fact, you have Kevin Smith coming up, mm-hmm. and um, you know one of the most surreal experiences so far was because I'm working on his show, um, the He Man show, you know, Masters of the Universe. Um, I had a session. And in my studio, which is my closet, and uh, you know, there, and there he is, Kevin Smith, in like there on Zoom. Yeah. It, you know, and it's just surreal. Like, what? Ignore what my coats, it's, Kevin. We- Ignore my coats. Exactly. <laughs> the Christmas exactly. decorations are falling down. <laughs> it's like you've seen my closet. That's yeah. basically what's happened. Um, yeah. No, it's it's it was really really weird. I mean, it was weird enough being directed by Kevin in the studio mm-hmm. and just like completely surreal that my, that I was asked to be a part of something that is just so wonderful. And I didn't expect to have happen. Um, but then to have Kevin in my closet, uh, <laughs> took on a whole other level of weirdness, but it was amazing. I'm so glad that you brought that up because we wanted to ask you about Kevin, <laughs> but I'm going to bump that question up uh, because Kevin is obviously like legendary in the geek world. He's legendary mm-hmm. from movies. So is he different as Kevin Smith, the animated television showrunner, than Kevin Smith, the persona that we all see online all the time? You know, uh, 
I wouldn't say so. I mean, you know, there's this, I guess, a seriousness in the studio because you're you're at work. Yeah. But he's by. I mean, he is the most supportive person that I think I've ever worked with in terms of just wanting you to do your best. And then if you do do something that touches him uh, or moves him in any way, he's like the, your biggest cheerleader and he makes you feel like a million bucks. And uh, it's a, it's just been a joy to work with him. I, you know, I, I went up to him at, I, I've told this story many times now, but I went up to him in the green room at one of the comic cons because he was there and it was, Oh, please let me go. Let's do a two shot. Mm-hmm. I like the two shots so much better. Can we do You're this? That Thank Christian? you. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. And uh, I don't like not seeing you. It's like, wait a minute. Uh, and, um, Just and, let everybody you know, know the, the the we're doing this through Streamyard, and and we see everything that we're showing you on the stream. We see as well. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> um, so we, he, you know, we're at a comic con, and we're in a green room, and in walks Kevin, and it's all like, <laughs> you know, because the the green room is kind of like high school. You know, it's mm-hmm. like the cheerleader, the cheerleader, and the football, you know, quarterback walk in, and everyone's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, so it's very everyone gets giddy, and. Um, and a couple of people I was sitting with, I think Phil Lamar knows him. So Phil went over to say hello. I've never met him. I don't know, don't, don't know him. I know of him, of course, because mm-hmm. he's, you know, he's a giant star. And um, I went over <laughs> and I introduced myself to him. And he was like, yeah, I know who you are. I watched every episode <laughs> of the Justice League and you're Wonder Woman. And I was like, <laughs> um, you know, Tee-hee, very- Mr. Smith, <laughs> I, know, I know, it was so crazy that he knew. And, and then of course, you know, a few months later I get this gig. And so, um, you just a note to all the kids watching, you know, if you see somebody you love and respect and appreciate, never, ever, ever, um, be too shy to go up and say something yeah. because, you know, best case scenario, you have a lovely conversation. Well, you get a job. No, yeah. but best case scenario, you have, <laughs> a lovely case. Con- <laughs> you have a lovely conversation. And if the person's not lovely, then you know what? Boo hoo to them because anyone who can't be gracious under those circumstances, like I, you know, forget about it. Well, I want to ask you this. You've probably told the story a million times, but, um, what was the audition process like for the Justice League series? Because I assume it would have been with Bruce Tim and Andrea Romano, the the secret talent of that entire cartoon. Um, what was it like getting the role? Do you know, did you have to audition a lot for the role of Wonder Woman? Or was it did... offer only like Masters of the Universe? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, no, uh, because no one knew me. Um, so no, it was definitely not offer only. And um, no, I think I auditioned for Masters of the Universe. Um, but like it was just, and then I got a call saying, you know, they, they want you to do this. It was just, it felt like kismet, but no, with Wonder Woman, I had to audition twice. Um, and, you know, went to Warner Brothers for the sec- for the callback and met Bruce and Andrea and um, saw the picture of Wonder Woman. And, the, you oh, know, they showed cool. me the they showed me the picture and they gave me the sides, the script to read. And I did a scene and they gave me a couple of notes and uh, and I did it again. And that was it, you know, and um do you remember, were and... they scratch sides or were they from the pilot? Scratch sides, if people don't know, are something that they'll write just for an audition process. No, I think they were from the pilot. That's um, cool. <laughs> yeah, because I, were, you know, there was the word strength and some great heroes in there. Mm-hmm. And I think I think it was um, I think it was like the real deal. And it just felt very you know, there's so many things, you know, I'm not a big animation actress and, you know, I, I'm never going to be the raccoon voice in, you know, a Disney cartoon. Like that's not really my career. Were you up for uh, the raccoon in Pocahontas? Is this a story? <laughs> is this a, were you up for Miko? <laughs> is that, is that the one you're like, that's the one that got away the raccoon in Pocahontas. <laughs> well, now that you've brought it up. Um, <laughs> well, I apologize. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, you know, the thing is I, I leave all of, that genius to the people who are geniuses in that regard. And so, um, you know, I, I just went in and I, I just felt very, it felt very comfortable reading the words for her, you know, just, it just felt like such a comfortable fit. And, um, Andrea gave me the direction, which is that, you know, you have to remember she's, you know, she's 
a princess, but she's a warrior. And you have to always keep those two things in mind. And you always have to bring that for every performance. And if I didn't, you know, she told me, um, you know, and she would, she would always make sure I was, you know, be, be stronger, be tougher. Um, and, you know, and then I, I just left and thought I did, I thought I did what I wanted to do. What, you know, wasn't that crazy drive home where you're like, oh, shoot, I should have done this. I should have done that. I, you know, it wasn't that it was like, I did everything I wanted to do. And I was nervous as heck, but you know, that's understandable. And then I got a call, I think, two weeks later that I got the gig. Two nice. weeks? That's fast. <laughs> now, before, I have a, we have a great question from the chat, but before we get to that, I want to shout yeah. out again to everybody that is watching this live and enjoying the amazing stories of Susan. I, I know I am. Don't forget that we're here to support yeah. and raise money for Operation Gratitude that sends 300,000 care packages. You can click Donate. It's only on YouTube, so if you're watching this on Twitter and Facebook, come on over to YouTube. Very easy. Uh, and a live chat donation also counts. And highest donor of this panel is going to win that original amazing art by Cully Hamner. Cully Hamner is, if you don't know, he drew and designed a lot of the costumes of the New 52. He actually designed that new Blue Beetle costume. And uh, right now, the high bid, uh, by my tabulations, is only $60. So... Just to let you know, if you go to Comic Con, original art by artists is usually like two hundred or three hundred dollars. So, mm. you guys want to support Operation Gratitude and get in there and get that Cully Hamner art? You can do it very easily. Now we have a great question in the chat here, Susan, who asked, "Meow, uh, uh, meow, nian. meow, nian, uh, Excuse me. I'm sorry. I apologize. Has hi, Susan. Who is the biggest goofball in the sound booth? And I'm going to assume they're asking about Justice League. <laughs> and I'm going to give you one guess. Okay, I'll, I'll throw it to you, um, Ashley and Jason. If you had to choose somebody of the Justice League that was the biggest goof, who would your guess be? I, I mean, I think I know. Do you want to take the guess? I think My I know. My guess of the Justice League crew, uh, based on his podcast, which yep. I know Susan has appeared on, would be uh, Michael Rosenbaum. Yeah, it's going to say Michael Rosenbaum. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did By the he way, have hair when he was recording? <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, well, you know what? That's funny you should say that. I think he would have now started I, Smallville, yeah, during that time. Um, I remember him with hair, but maybe that's just, maybe that's not right. But I do remember him with hair. I'll get back to you on that. All right. I'll have, All my, right. I'll have my people the call pictures. his people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, uh, you're the person who we were talking about earlier. <laughs> we'll let us know. I'm so yes. glad, though, that we brought up Andrea Romano because uh, she's like the secret sauce behind so many incredible projects. Uh, when we were prepping for this, I saw that you worked on Avatar The Last Airbender, which was super excited. We just finished a mm -hmm. rewatch of that, which she was also a huge part of. Yes. And you mentioned her in the audition process. Was she always that direct and that kind with her direction? every time you worked with her so specific so supportive so kind you know I use the word cheerleader I would never describe her as a cheerleader per se mm -hmm. um because it almost isn't doesn't have enough gravitas for who she, you know how she is she you know she's a legend and mm -hmm. she's not a secret that's the thing everybody knows her Everybody knows her. And that's so rare for a casting director and a voice director um, to be as famous as she is. And the reason is because she's extraordinary and she was a part of everyone's childhood. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what cartoon you watch, chances are in some way she was connected to it. Yeah. And, you know, she was... Um, it was just such a joy because we would do a read through of the script before we recorded it. And we were all together in this giant room um, at Warner brothers. And it, you know, it, it, it was just wonderful to have that experience because you don't always get that experience. And we would do a read through with Bruce and Andrea and the writer would be there. So, um, you know, Dwayne would be there or Stan oh, or Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne. And, you know, we would just be there and we would read it through. And then they would, we would be all in the booth together. Um, Andrea and, and Bruce would come into the booth with us. And then they would leave the booth and go on the other side of the glass. And we would record it. And, um, you know, just being, having that be one of my first big time experiences and having, you know, you get spoiled because it's, it's the best. There's just, you know, you're never going to work on anything um, with that kind of star, star power again, and that kind of, you know, gorgeous creativity. Um, I've worked on other things that are magnificent, but nothing that beats that for an experience. 
Something that I would love to ask you, Susan, is um, you've voiced a lot of cool characters like Mera and, of course, Wonder Woman, and you were um, uh, in Avatar The Last Airbender. You've been in Destiny. Um, one disadvantage that voiceover actors have is, you know, live-action actors, they, they get makeup and they, they get costumes. They, they get other things to help them create the character fully, whereas... Voice actors only have your voice to create and like inhabit that character. So when when you're prepping to play a new character, what is your process like? What is what is your bag of tricks to like find and know how to play that character? Well, you have a, the script helps a lot. Mm -hmm. um, for me, that's that's so much of it. My imagination, you know, is for every actor out there, I mean, it's just especially in voiceover, especially in video games, because you're by yourself. Maybe you haven't even seen the script until you get to the job because everything's hush hush and they don't want you to. Um, Are video games and, more hush hush than animation? Um, I find video games the hushiest, you know, and you, don't, probably you don't even a lot earlier than you are animated projects. Well, right. yeah, I mean, anime, yeah, yeah, yeah because it, they take so long. Um, mm. And yeah, you don't know the title sometimes, the character name isn't even right. You get there and you're oh, just really? like, yeah, <laughs> because, you know, they don't want, they don't want anything to leak and you have to sign NDAs, yeah. um, which I sign for commercial auditions too now. I mean, that's just become... It's you like know, standard. We, we standard we, in our writers' room when when we were were able to go to the office. Yeah, we had a stack of NDAs right by the front door to where it's like if you come into this office, you got to sign an NDA. Yeah, it's yeah. everything across the I'm board. I'm just imagining Susan getting a call that's like, "We'd like you to audition for Grass Effect, if you don't mind. That would be really great." <laughs> you no, know, it's nothing that I wish it were like that because it's nothing like that, and 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 you can't even get your agent to find out information. I mean, that was one of the things when we had a strike at the guild, yeah. one of the things we, we wanted more transparency. Like, what are we working on here? What are we auditioning for? Maybe I'll pass on it. If I know the project, mm -hmm. maybe I'll be more excited. Um, but you want some, because really the power of an actor is to be able to say no. It's like one of the few things we have control of, you know, control of. Um, we can say no to things and we can say yes to things. But it's harder to say yes if you don't quite know what the full project, if you just have your sides and maybe not even like just yeah. a paragraph. So, um, but so the script helps a lot if there's a picture that that can help. But mostly it's the direction. It's, you know, they tell you what they want. They tell you, they will give you a voice spec mm -hmm. and they will explain oh. what they want from the character. Now, it, it's gotten kind of out of hand in commercial work because they are, you know, they want you to sound like a celebrity, but they don't want to use hey, a celebrity. celebrity. So, you know, I can't tell you how many times, um, you know, I get sent auditions that they want me to sound just like so and so, and you're, you know, it's. Susan, it's we need you to really... do a Matthew McConaughey, please. <laughs> you know, I Matthew McConaughey, by the way, is excellent. Uh, um, we have to hear it then. <laughs> no, 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 but I mean, but, but it's like I can't be this person. Let me be yes. me. Yes, you know, yes. it's such a cliche, but let me bring what I bring to it, and um, you know, it's 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 become somewhat of a pet peeve of mine, frankly, um, because I just. I'm, I'm, it, it's every, it, it's in every audition now, you know, it's just, they want you to sound like so-and-so and, uh, you know, I can't sound like so-and-so I can sound like me and, you know, that's either going to work for you or it won't, but either way. Um, so anyway, so I guess the specs help enormously with the role and you have a voice director there. You have an Andrea Romano. Yes. And then obviously you've auditioned. So they know that there's a certain timber, a certain quality in your voice. And then you, you know, then it's up to you to utilize that schooling you got and use that voice, which is your instrument to bring that character to life. Um, so, and then you just pray. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of the job I, in Hollywood, I, I believe. It's just like, <laughs> please. That, yeah. Right, that you don't get replaced, yep. you know? I'd love to uh, just ask a little bit more about video games because uh, 
years and years ago, Jason was talking to Kevin Conroy and he was talking about how long it took to record Batman video games because you had to do every single version and every yeah. single reaction. Yeah. Um, so for you, has recording video games been a lot more time and a lot more work than a traditional animated role or like a commercial voiceover? You know, I think if Wonder Woman had had her own game, that okay, you know, I take had... to Twitter right now. <laughs> don't don't, you know, don't say that... if, say when. When I'd play the yeah. hell out of that game. <laughs> well, you know, that, but I think that that's Kevin being the star, and the yeah. game is about Batman, obviously, and um, that's a lot of work. That is a lot of work. Um, so I've only been in ensemble. I mean, obviously, that was also an ensemble piece. It wasn't like it was only Batman in Arkham. But, but it's um, called Batman, so you make a fair point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, no, I haven't. I mean, the thing about video games, it can be arduous and it can be grueling. You know, mm-hmm. that's another thing we were striking for was we wanted different working conditions. We wanted, it. you know, they only get you for four hours because beyond that, you, you really can trash your voice. Yep. Um, and four hours for a session. Yeah. But um, it, it, it's intense. But so, you know, animation can also be intense. But voice uh, video games are a certain thing that you cannot fake your way through a video game. You can't go to a video game session having never done it, I don't think, and pretend you know what you're doing. There's just too much that's specific that you have to bring to the table. And um, you earn your money. I'll, I'll tell you that, you know, especially if you're playing a character like Batman in Arkham mm-hmm. or, um, you know, I've, I have I mean, I was lucky in Destiny in that I got to be the voice of the human um, female player. And interestingly enough, when I went for, to audition for when I went for my first session, um, I said, what what do you want me to sound like? And they said, OK, you know how you sound right now? And I said, yeah. And he said, like that. And oh, I was that's like, beautiful. Oh, that's oh. great. <laughs> Brilliant. You're like easy. Brilliant. This is an easy, easy session. Peasy. Easy peasy because other times I've had to, you know, sound like yeah. the lower register and you know, um and you know, you have to always die in video games, always. And it's always oh, yeah. brutal. And oh, you know, that's Okay, just, I wanna ask I, I would love to ask you about that. What is <laughs> when they're like, Okay, Susan? We need a different way for you to die. Where do you go? Like, where do you go for this? <laughs> like, do you like to go like deep in the like? Do you make it long? Do you like ah or like? Do you gurgle they tell more? You. They tell you. Oh, okay. You know, they, they they will tell you. You know, we need a short. We need a short um, death rattle. We need a longer mm. one. We need, you know, uh, they, you know, they're very specific about what okay. they want, and you know that helps enormously. But the truth is. Every single time, every single time, there's a part of me that says, God, I hope that was okay. (laughs) God, I hope that wasn't, you know, but but also that another truth is you're going to hit some out of the park and then you're going to strike out. If I can Mm. use a baseball analogy and sports, that's just just (laughs) part of it. You know, you're going to one of the things and I think it's really true about being an actor and about being a a successful actor is you have to be willing to make a fool of yourself. Now, some people are really, really good at it and they're the most successful people. Um, You know, if you're self-conscious and if you don't, you know, you're worried about, you know, I think I made a living with my voice sounding a certain way and it was hard for me to get out of that safety zone and that, that, you know, the, um, the, the familiar and it took me a long time to or I should say any day now I will move myself out of the safety zone and um, you know allow myself to do something different and it's always fun when I do give mm-hmm. myself permission and really allow myself to do that well you're known first of all I want to say that uh, personally I'm I love the safety zone it's iconic you are the Wonder Woman that I hear in my head when Same. I'm reading the comics so I think it's serving you very well but you, you are very well known for playing these incredible DC ladies is there anybody on the Marvel side maybe a really wild choice that you would like to do voice work for you know I I would you know I I <laughs> listen <laughs> I would be thrilled. To... I'm calling Marvel right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just get them on. Would you get them on the phone? Yeah, they're they're watching. Um, 
you know, like I know Dan Slott, as you know, uh, yes. we, you know Dan Slott very well. And, you know, I would love to read to do something that he's done at Marvel. I mean, the, the thought of of performing something that he has actually written would be such a kick and such a you know, such a thrill. Um, well, I'm going to put this in there because this is my favorite Marvel character of all time, and I think you would kill this voice. Uh, Supersonic Hero says Susan Storm. Susan Eisenberg as Susan Storm. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there you go. I, I like it. I like it. Um, all right, thank you for putting it in the Marvel Universe. That's right. Good one. <laughs> wink, Good wink, one. Wink. But, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, it's just, I, as you know, um, you're an actor and you just want the gig. And, um, you know, it's not like I have an exclusive contract with DC or Warner Brothers. And as much as, you know, I, I've said all along, if I could only voice in animation Wonder Woman for the rest of my career, I would take it. You know, I, I it is such an honor and it is such a privilege to voice her. Um, but, you know, there's never ever, and it, there's never a guarantee with any of this stuff. And, you know, you have to be a big girl and be a grown up when you hear other people doing it. And except for Gaul. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, you know, you just have to suck it up. And like in all of our lives, you see other people get the gig and you have to just deal with it because that's just the reality of this business. Real quick, before we move on to the next question, I just want to remind everybody yeah. out there that is watching that you can donate to help Operation Gratitude send care packages to service members and, and for, for the holidays this year, wounded heroes, service members, their families back home. Come over to YouTube if you're watching this somewhere else. Come over to YouTube, click Donate. There's the live chat donation button. You can ask Susan a question and also donate to Operation Gratitude. We keep none of the money, neither does YouTube. It goes straight to an amazing organization. And the highest donor in this hour wins an amazing piece of Christian's show up that art, slap that art up there. Cully Hamner's donated this piece of Blue Beetle and you are going to win that piece of art if you're the highest donor and you live in the U.S. Sorry, international watchers. Look, unless you're international and you're going to pay for shipping. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right now, I'm just going to throw it out there. The high bid right now is $75. So if you want to make an amazing donation higher than $75, uh, you will win that piece of Blue Beetle art. All right, Susan, um, there's a great question here um, that I think you probably get asked a lot as well, but I know many people who watch this channel are probably watching the stream or that are here for you are probably also prospective voice actors or want to have that a career that is as amazing as yours. And Joel the Geek asks, what is one thing you wished you knew about voice acting that you think others should know if they want to be voiceover actors? That's a great question. Um... I think I would have just uh, allowed myself a little bit more um, freedom to expand my horizons a bit um, because I kind of, like I said before, stayed in, in my groove. I think that, um, you know, so many people are afraid to try and they want to do voiceover. So many people come up to me at the cons and say, how do I get in? And I you know, I always encourage people because if it's a dream of yours, um, you have to go for it. You just mm -hmm. have to. So I always tell people to take classes. And I, I think that is so valuable to take acting classes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have specific voiceover classes, which is brilliant. And I did take those. But acting classes are, are, are really important um, because you want to be a good actor. You're going to be called upon to do that. When we talk about video games, when we talk about animated series, mm -hmm. and when we talk about commercial acting, narration, all of it, you have to feel comfortable in your skill set um, because you're going to have, if you're successful, you're going to have to do all of those things. Can I ask and, you a follow up with that yeah, real quick? Yeah. When you talk about an actor's skill set, like for you, what do you, mm -hmm. what, what do you consider as like your number one? Like what's something you're really good at in terms of voice over acting or what's the one thing you can always nail if someone was to ask you that question? Or if you were presenting um, yourself for a job, I guess. Yeah. So most of my work is commercial work. It's, mm -hmm. So that's that's like my, you know, that's what I do the most. And, um, you know, I I I I love it. You know, I love I like making anything come off the page. But um, there's something about I love advertising, and when it's well written mm -hmm. and. Um, I think I can 
sell a tag better than anybody. No, uh, <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I love it. I mean, I don't, I can't answer that question because it's, first of all, it, it, Susan, I got, I got Marvel on the phone. They're asking. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to say, Susan, if you haven't considered doing like a master class on or Skillshare, how, yeah, how to like work in VO, I think it would be fabulous because like I'm taking so many notes <laughs> as we're doing. You know, I've, I've, I have taught a, a few times um, mm-hmm. in in my career, and I love it because um, you want to encourage people and you want to help people um, do it. And I didn't know anybody. That's the thing. I came out here to California. I didn't know anybody and I didn't have any connections to the industry. But You're not a Rockefeller? What? <laughs> no, not even secretly. But I I did work I did work with my voice even when I was younger in high school. I used to do the advertising for my dad's business. Nice. And my sister wrote the copy because she was worked for him as well. And I would go on the radio and I would do ads. So I think that I always knew that this was something that I could do and use. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I I just think that there's a lot to be said for going for it. A lot of people have talent and there are a lot of people yeah. far more talented than I am. But the thing is you have to put yourself in the game and you have to have the confidence to do that. And, you know, my mom said, you know, you don't want to be, when I was debating whether to move to LA, Mm-hmm. Um, my mom just said, you know, you don't want to be 50 and say, I should have, I, you know, I should have gone to LA and she was absolutely right. You want to try. So I would encourage anyone out there who wants to get into voiceover to take your classes and to, um, get your demo reels. And there are classes that will help you get your demo reels. Um, you want to sign up for those classes cause that's, I think the best thing, um, and you want to submit those to agents and, you know, everyone's working from home. You might as well be one of those people. Yeah. Why I not? also think it's so beautiful that your mom was like, you should go, you should try it. And I think that that is an attitude that we all need to have with all the creative people. Well, in our lives. I, I think that's beautiful. I felt a very personal connection because I remember when I was making the decision to come out here, I, it was one of those things where I was filling out paperwork to be a, to become a teacher. I was filling out paperwork to maybe go to law school. And it just like, yeah, it, it stuck out to me. The same thing that you just said, where I was like, I don't want to like turn 50 and, and think, oh, I should have gone or what would have happened if I had gone. Um, and I think that's that's very common. That's a, I, I love that piece of advice that you said to just just take the chance. Bet on yourself. Well, and, and I'm sure like like all of us, I was a teacher. Like I did teach out mm-hmm. here and I did. I worked as an assistant. I worked as an assistant for directors, mm-hmm. for casting directors. Hey, for producers, <laughs> you know, and, and that's, that's how I paid my rent. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to do the voiceover thing. And I was really lucky because so many of my bosses knew that I was pursuing acting and voiceover and gave me opportunities. I worked on a TV show called uh, Class of 96 with John Romano. John Romano let me be on one of the shows. I worked as a director's assistant for a in a director Lamont Johnson and he he knew I, this was 1990 mm-hmm. and he knew I wanted to be an actor and he got me into the, he, he got me into the union because he put me in the movie Heck and yeah. he let me read he let me read with when he was casting the film he let me read opposite every actor that came in oh you and, were a reader that's great mm-hmm. what a great like testing round mm-hmm unbelievable so the generosity of that but you first have to you know be able to say i want to do this Mm -hmm. yes and you have to then let people know you can't keep it your secret you have to let people know so that you give people the space to be generous with you Mm -hmm. like lamont and john and heidi levitt the casting director heidi levitt you know people were exceedingly generous with me now we have a great question in the chat here from Garth McMurray, who says, with the rise in fame for voiceover actors due to conventions, videos, people like Critical Role, et cetera, do you find that you get recognized more by fans? No, Mm -hmm. Um, no, no. Uh, I I think I have like a sweet fan base because of social media. Mm -hmm. I think that- And the dog lovers. (laughs) <laughs> and the dog lovers and, uh, you know, and the flower lovers, because I put yes. a lot of flowers. But I mean, I, 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 uh, I think that the cons and 
I think they do, you know, raise your profile, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wouldn't say that, you know, when I, I have to like wear a hat when I go to Trader Joe's, I mean, not that I'm going to Trader Joe's right now, but, you know, it's not like I'm known. I'm certainly, it's, you know, it's not Kevin Conroy's stardom and that's okay. You know, um, have you it, been recognized it, at a Trader Joe's? No. <laughs> that's so funny because I'm so su- I'm such a nerd that I think I would recognize everybody in that cast yeah. <laughs> if they walk by. Like... <laughs> that's, that's so adorable. Yeah. Um, I think George yeah. George Newbern would be the only one where I'd be like, oh, maybe not. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is that when I've gone to cons with George because of scandal. Mm-hmm. Oh um, yeah, you're that's when, correct. When we would go to when we would go to dinner, um, you know, at when we would be at these cons. All these people recognized him. I was like going to say, we my were, mom would recognize him from Scandal in like a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. And people would shout across the restaurant, George. And like we would get dessert sent over from the management because they love Scandal. Um, so George gets recognized. And George is like on camera. Like that's another thing. Yes. Everyone yeah. in the cast was on camera. And we were, we were just doing this, talking about this on, in, you know, Michael's um, podcast. Which is a, we, everybody should go check out that Michael Rosenbaum podcast. Inside. I would just, I just, if you watch the YouTube video of it, you could just see all of you on camera. And it's, it's yes. quite, it's quite an amazing, it's such a fun video to watch. It was so surprising mm-hmm. because I didn't know what to expect, but I didn't expect it to be as um, intimate and, you know, just like heartwarming as it was, um, you know, I, it, it was really special. I mean, I talked to Carl after it, or after that, cause I was trying to get him to do something else with me. Cause he doesn't do a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And he said, Oh, it was so, so sweet with, you know, Michael's. It was so intimate. I said, well, the thing I'm asking you to do isn't going to be that, but <laughs> it'll be like us and we'll be together and it'll be, it should be fun. Um, but that was, you know, that was very, very cool having that experience with, all of us on that. I mean, that was like, didn't see, but they're all on camera actors and it was very intimidating working with everybody because, you know, they all had these very uh, big, they had these resumes that were quite varied. And I had done some guest star roles um, in animation. I had done extreme ghostbusters and life with Louie. I'd done some stuff, but nothing like a series regular and nothing like wonder woman, wonder woman. So it was intimidating. Um, yeah. But Su- now they're all your best friends. That's right. But Su- that's how it seems online. They're an actual league. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Susan, we are a league. Yeah. We are a league. Susan, I'd love to ask you this question as to sort of close it out. And any fans, guys, this is going to be your last chance to throw out a question to Susan before uh, we figure out who is the winner of the highest donor of this hour. Don't forget to click that donate button on YouTube. Please. Susan, this is such please. an amazing, I mean, seriously, it- you guys. Bravo to you for bravo. Bravo to you for doing this because I mean, literally. Well, I adore both of you. So had you said, "Hey, oh, we're doing you. a fundraiser for blah blah blah," I would have been like, "Sign me up." But this is such. A, I love that you're doing this. I know you have a connection to the military, and I just, you know, as a father, I have a father who served, and um, you know, who's so proud of that time in his life and mm-hmm. talks about it to the day. So reverently, and I just I love that you're doing this. Well, thank Fun you. Fact, Susan was the first person who agreed yep. to do this with us. So. And, and we have to we have to give you mad thanks because again there was for a lot of this year over especially over the summer, Ashley and I were just scratching our brains to be like, how do we do it this year? Yeah, yeah. How do we do it? <laughs> you know? So thank you so much for like make letting us find a new way. But my question is, we have HBO Max a little streaming app people know there's certain other justice league movie that's dropping on that service um how much would you love if we had a reunite the tim cast two-hour justice league movie with your league all back together because i've seen like there is a movement out there for people that want to bring that cast up i think the love is there i think we would all see this and hbo max seems to be like Mm -hmm. the perfect place for it to live um this may, you know, and if this violates any legal agreements, don't say anything. That's totally fine. No, 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 no. Give us a no, nice, no, big, no, wink. No. A nice no. big wink and we'll know. But do you think? I think everyone knows how I feel about it. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, because I haven't been shy about it. And mm-hmm. and you ask how I'd feel, but I, I think more importantly than, than how I would feel is how the fans would feel. Mm-hmm. And that sounds so, that might sound Pollyannish, but it's how, why I started talking about this 
to begin with because I do go to conventions and because I am on social media that especially the conventions where people time after time after time come up to you and talk about how you were part of their childhood yeah. and they want to share with you what it meant to them to watch the Justice League. And, um, you know, the actors are a big part of it and we're a small part of it because I think the writers really deserve so much of the credit. Um, and not to take away from the actors, I think we had a chemistry that was really fantastic mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm delighted. But um, we had brilliant scripts and brilliant directors and Dan Reba putting that kiss, you know, that Bruce had in this, like, it's just delicious. But I just think we... We, the fans and the actors, we want the reunion, I and mean, it would be HBO Max would be a dream come true. I think it'd be one of their most watched I, things. I honestly, mm-hmm. truly believe it. I think a lot of people would watch it. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, and I, I, I said not too long ago that I called Bruce Tim to ask him, you know, because I don't want to take the fans down a road that has no happy ending. I mean, that mm-hmm. doesn't. I, I just don't want to do that to the fans, and they've been so loving and supportive. Um, and Bruce said, listen, you know, it's not something that's on the docket. This was about six months ago. He said, it's not something on the docket, but I would never tell you to give up hope. And I would never tell you not to try. He loved doing the Justice League. Yeah. It was, you know, and I thought after um, Justice League versus the Fatal Five that maybe um, something would happen. I thought I, that was sort of yeah. like a, a soft pilot, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't. In fact, I had no one. You know, I think that it caught them by surprise because of jail reunion that they that they you know i think that that's why they end up drawing the characters Mm -hmm. from like from the original series which by the way i didn't know when i was recording her that she was going to look like that it wasn't until i went in to do adr that you saw um, like the animatic or and cried i mean truly because i have not seen her in any project since we left that show in 2006 and it was emotional to know that they were bringing her back. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I just, you know, I'm a huge fan of the show. I'm a huge fan of those characters, the actors, all of it. And I would want not just us to come back. I'd want the, so much of the creative team um, would love to do it. You talk to a Rich Fogel, you talk to a Dan Reba. I don't think anything would give them, well, I shouldn't say that, but I think it would give them great joy <laughs> to be a part of it. Um, we, I've talked to them privately. So, you know, everyone is on board and everyone would, love to be a part of something. Andrea said she'd come out of retirement to direct us. <laughs> we have that yes. <laughs> we have that on on record. Um she she has discussed it. So, you know, I think it's up to the fans, really. Um well, 2026 I think that isn't that far away. Yeah. Great year, great anniversary year. Maybe that's what we'll get. Well Susan <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I hope so. Maybe. Susan, you were talking about great joy. You have brought us so much joy by being here and talking to us today and helping us at this point. We have now raised $2,355 of our $5,000 goal. We are halfway to the, almost halfway to the goal. Susan, Phenomenal. thank you so much for your help. This was truly, pun intended, wonderful. Um, <laughs> please tell our listeners and our watchers where they can find you online and if you have any new exciting projects coming up. Well, the, they can find me online at Susan Eisenberg one, the number one on uh, Twitter and Instagram. And I guess the, the exciting project coming up would be uh, Masters of the Universe, where yeah. I get to play sorceress, and that'll be on Netflix. I don't have dates, but maybe ask Kevin because you have him coming up yeah. Yeah, in, sure. your, in your fourth hour. We also right? know uh, we also know Ted Buscelli, so he's another one where we're like, tell us when it's happening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I don't know. Um, that would be that would be a good Kevin question to ask. Yes, we well, added to our list. Well, Susan, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank and, you, and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye.